Hey guys, it's Alexandra from ilovenots.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet my Landon hand towel. This is an easy crochet pattern. The Landon series on my blog features the moss stitch, aka the linen stitch, which is comprised of single crochets and chain one spaces. My border over here is the reversed single crochet, also called the crab stitch. For my hand towel, I'm using We Crochet Dishy Yarn, which is a worsted weight 100% cotton yarn. This is my preference for washcloths and hand towels and things like that. I really like that the yarn is color fast, so if I'm using the hand towel or I'm washing it, I do not have to worry about the color bleeding and fading. Alternatives would be Lily Sugar and Cream, Crafter's Secret Cotton from Hobby Lobby, Lion Brand has one called Reup, and I know Premier Yarns has one that I believe has polyester in it, which would also be good because that makes it durable. If you work up a hand towel in a yarn that has synthetic fibers like polyester or acrylic, just make sure not to use it to grab anything out of the oven and do not place hot pots fresh from the oven on top. Otherwise, those synthetic fibers will melt and you can burn yourself. The colorway here is called Mushroom. It's a greenish brown. You're also going to need an H8 5mm crochet hook for the body of the hand towel. For the border, you're going to want to go a size down. This is a G6 4.25mm. I'm going to link in the description below the free crochet pattern, which you'll find on my blog. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to begin with a slip knot. So I have the yarn just over my fingers here, and I'm going to wrap it around my index finger two times, and I'll hold the tension down with my middle finger my thumb. Pull the loop on the left up over the other loop, but not off my finger. Pull the loop that's now on the left up over the other one and off my finger. And I'll take my crochet hook, insert it into the loop where my finger is. I'm going to hold the working yarn with my right hand and with my left hand I'm just going to pull on that tail end and that will pull the slack so that your knot is at normal tension. Then I'll just drop the tail end and pick up the working yarn. For the linen stitch or the moss stitch you're going to want to chain a multiple that is even for the hand towel, you're going to want to chain 74. I'm just working a small sample here, so I'm going to chain 8. To chain, we're going to yarn over and pull through the loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the loop. So that's 3. I'm going to go ahead and continue working. Once you have all your chains, you're going to single crochet into the second chain from the hook. We don't count this loop that's on our hook, so we're skipping this first chain down here, and we'll single crochet into the second chain. Insert your hook directly into the center, yarn over, pull through. There are two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. Then we'll chain one, skip the next chain single crochet into the next chain, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through. There are two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. Then chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through. Two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. And you continue in pattern just like that, chain one, skip one stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. Work until you get to the very end of your chains. 
After row one, you'll see you have single crochet and then a chain space, single crochet and a chain space, single crochet and a chain space all the way across. We're going to single crochet now into those chain spaces. We're going to start with a chain one and then we'll turn. We always single crochet into the edges, so I'm going to go ahead and single crochet into the very first stitch there. Insert my hook into that stitch, picking up both loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through both loops to complete a single crochet. Then we have a chain space next. We're, sing we're going to single crochet into that stitch. And when you single crochet into a chain space, you just simply insert your hook right into that chain space, into that hole, and then complete your stitch. The next stitch is a single crochet. We're going to chain one over that and skip that single crochet. In the next chain space, we're going to work a single crochet. The next stitch is a single crochet. We want to chain one over that and skip it. My next stitch is a chain one space. I'm going to single crochet over that. You'll continue working all the way across. You'll single crochet into each chain one space, chain one, and skip the next single crochet. When you get to the end, you single crochet into the very last stitch. And there's row two. This is a two row repeat, so this is one of the rows that you repeat. And row three will be your second repeat. To work row three, chain one and turn. Single crochet into the first stitch. The next stitch you have is a single crochet. Chain one, skip that single crochet single crochet into the next chain space. Chain one, skip the next single crochet, chain one into the next chain space. Chain one, you'll continue working all the way across, skipping the next single crochet, then single crochet into the next chain space, all the way until you get to the end. At the end, you'll have two single crochets together. You're going to skip the next single crochet and single crochet into the last single crochet. And that's going to be your second repeat for this stitch pattern. Now we go back and we repeat row two. Chain one and turn. Single crochet into the first stitch single crochet into the next chain one space, chain one, skip the next single crochet, single crochet into the next chain one space, chain one, skip the next single crochet, single crochet into the next chain one space, continue all the way across. When we get to the end of the row, we just single crochet into the last stitch. Then for the second row of the repeat again, chain one, single crochet into the first stitch, chain one, skip the next single crochet, single crochet into the chain one space, chain one, skip the next single crochet, single crochet into the next chain one space, Continue working across, chain one, skip the next single crochet, single crochet into the next chain one space, all the way across until you have two single crochets left. We'll chain one, skip the next single crochet, and single crochet into the last stitch. And you simply continue repeating row two and then row three. You're going to want to measure between rows 5 and 8. Measure your width to make sure that you're on point. With this stitch pattern, it's very easy to have a tighter 
tension so you may want to take your work out and redo it otherwise you can add more rounds to the border to add width and height if you're following along with me the hand towel at this point is 14 and 3 quarter inches wide for our hand towel we're going to work 111 rows in total that's going to be about 25 and 3 quarter inches long or 25.75 inches long. Then we'll switch from our H hook down to our G hook and I'll show you how to do the border. Before we get there I'm going to go ahead and show you how to add a new ball of yarn because you'll run out before you finish the body of your hand towel. You want to change your yarn ball in a single crochet. So you'll work up until you get pretty close to the end. You want to make sure you leave a tail long enough that you can comfortably weave in. I've worked a chain one. Then I'll insert my hook into the next chain space. Yarn over and pull through. That's the first half of the single crochet. We have two loops on our hook. And now we're at the last yarn over, so I'm just going to hold the tension and drop the yarn tail and grab my new strand from my new ball. I want to leave a tail end long enough that I can weave in there and make a loop, and then I'll put that loop on my hook. This counts as the last yarn over of the single crochet, and then we'll pull it through both of those loops. Now our single crochet is complete. We can drop the previous tail end to the back and the new tail end to the back. Pick up the new working yarn, work a chain one, and continue working in pattern just with our new ball instead of our old ball. I'm going to stop here with my sample. I want to show you how to work the border. I have gone down one hook size from an H8 5mm crochet hook to a G6 4.25mm crochet hook because I have found that if you work this border in the, eight, the H8 hook that you started with it is going to ruffle. As I said the tension on this stitch pattern is a little bit tighter than most, so working just the plain single crochet will make it ruffle all on its own. By going down one hook size, it works out perfectly. For the first round of the border, it's just plain single crochet all the way around. So I'm going to chain one and turn. And I'll single crochet into the very first stitch and continue single crocheting into each chain space and single crochet all the way until I get to the end of the row. Once you reach the very last stitch of the row, you're going to increase. We're going to add extra stitches in here so this corner will lay flat. So I'm going to start with one single crochet, then I'll chain one, and I'll insert my hook back into that same exact stitch and work another single crochet. If your work hasn't rotated, it kind of does it when you do the corner anyway, go ahead and rotate it so you can work down the side. We're going to work one single crochet into the side of each row. It's going to look like two different rows because we have turned each time so the row looks a little bit different. Our next row looks like, if you're looking from the side, the V-shaped stitch that we see when we work on the top. Insert your hook as close to the edge as possible into that V-shaped stitch, picking up both loops. You don't want to work 
Here, you don't want to work into this space that's in between the stitches. You want to work into that stitch on the side edge, picking up just those two loops, and complete a single crochet. And you'll see here close up that you've worked into the center of that stitch. The next row is just a hole, so you'll insert your hook there and single crochet. Then we've got another one that looks like a stitch. Insert into the center of that stitch, picking up the two loops on the side and single crochet. The next one is a hole, so we'll single crochet into that. The next one here looks like a stitch, so I'm inserting right into the center, picking up both loops on the side and complete a single crochet. And then the next one is a hole. And you'll continue working all the way down the side until you get to the last stitch. Not including this last stitch or the top increase, you're going to have 111 stitches. In the last stitch of the row, we're going to work at another increase. So we'll single crochet, chain one, and then single crochet into the same exact stitch. and it sort of rotates your fabric for you. If it hasn't, go ahead and rotate so we can work across the bottom opposite side of the foundation chain. Here we're just going to single crochet into each chain all the way across and it looks a little bit like the stitches that you're used to. Right into the center of the chain and just single crochet. I've worked leaving the last stitch unworked, not including the last stitch or this increase. You're going to have 71 single crochets across here. In the last stitch, we're going to increase again. So single crochet, chain one, single crochet into that same exact stitch. I've come to my beginning tail, so I'm just going to pull it tight and then I'm going to crochet one stitch over it and then I'll drop it. I don't want to crochet too much over it, I would rather weave it in. So I'm just going to work one stitch and then drop it. When we're working up the side, we're going to have the same number of stitches here as we did on the other side. So not including the corners, you're going to have 111 single crochets. The side edges look a little bit different than they did before, but the same concept. The next stitch I have here, I'm going to insert directly into the center, picking up both of the top loops and single crochet. And remember I said I'm going to single crochet this stitch over my tail end, so I just put it on my hook so I can complete the single crochet over it. Tighten and then drop. The next one is a hole. The next one is a stitch. I'm inserting directly into the center of it. Picking up the two loops on the side. The next one is a hole. And I'm going to continue upwards. Make sure to count. It's very easy to add or leave a stitch out when you're working the sides if you're just naturally going up and down. So just make sure that you count your stitches and that they equal the same amount on both sides. Once you reach the top, there's the first single crochet that we worked. We're going to insert our hook into that same exact stitch, complete another single crochet, chain one, and then slip stitch join to the first stitch. So we'll insert our hook into the first stitch picking up both loops, yarn over, 
pull through that stitch and the stitch that's on our hook. That is a slip stitch join. And the first round of the border is complete. If you would like to add more height or more width to your hand towel, you can chain one and work another round of just plain single crochet, working in the same manner, single crochet into each stitch all the way across. In the chain space, increase, single crochet all the way down, in the chain space, increase, and continue all the way around and slip stitch join. This will add about another 3 8 inches to your width and to your height. I only worked one round for my hand towel and then I'm going to work one round of a modified reverse single crochet and I'm going to show you that now. This is row 2 of the border. I'm going to start with a chain 1. Reverse single crochet. Typically we work to the left and all the way around. That's counterclockwise. For reverse single crochet, we work to the right and all the way around clockwise. So it's going to feel a little bit different working backwards. But we want to insert our hook into the chain one space that we just worked. So I'm holding the loop on my hook with my index finger to hold the tension. And then I'm just going to insert my hook backwards into that chain one space. Yarn over, pull through, two loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. So it's still a single crochet, it's just worked in the opposite direction. And I'm going to hold that loop again on my hook and I'm going to insert my hook into the next single crochet, which is the single crochet of your corner. Yarn over, pull through, two loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. And this is where the pattern begins. Chain one skip the next single crochet, single crochet into the next single crochet. So what I like to do is hold the tension on my loop of my crochet hook as I pull the stitch over and then insert into that stitch. Then I'll chain one skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. I'm holding the tension and I'm pulling my stitch over and then I'll insert into the stitch I'm working and complete my single crochet. Chain one, skip the next single crochet, single crochet into the next one. Hold the tension, pull the stitch over, insert into that stitch. You're going to continue working all the way down the row. Chain one, skip one stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. When you finish on this row, your last single crochet will be into the single crochet from the increase down on the bottom corner. So we've just finished our last single crochet into that first single crochet from the increase. I'm going to single crochet into the chain one space of the corner and single crochet into the next single crochet of the corner as well. Now we're going to work across the bottom of our hand towel. We've just worked into the first single crochet of that bottom edge there. That's the, the single crochet from the increase. I'm going to chain one, skip the next single crochet, and single crochet into the next one just as I did down the side. Chain one, skip the next single crochet, single crochet into the next single crochet. All the way across. When you get to the end, your last single crochet is going to be worked into the first single crochet 
from the next corner increase. Then we'll single crochet into that chain space and single crochet into the next single crochet of that increase. And now we're in the position to work up the side. Same exact manner. Your first single crochet here has been worked into the single crochet of the corner of the increase. Chain one, skip the next single crochet and single crochet into the next one. Chain one, skip the next single crochet, single crochet into the next one. All the way up the side, when you get to the end, your last single crochet is going to be worked into the first single crochet of the corner edge. Then I'll single crochet into the chain space. Single crochet into the single crochet there of the corner. And now we just have the top left. We're going to work it the same exact way. Chain one, skip the next stitch single crochet into the next stitch. Work all the way across, working your very last single crochet into the very first corner where you started. It will be into that first single crochet from that corner. So remember your very first stitch was worked into the chain one space of that corner. So our last stitch of the round needs to be worked into the single crochet that's just to the left of that. Okay, so this is what our washcloth looks like so far, just on a miniature scale. I really, 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 really like the twisted edge of this reverse single crochet. Usually straight reverse single crochet, you work a single crochet into each stitch all the way around. But I really like how it looks with the chain one in there. I'm going to go back to my original sample so I can show you how to finish this off, but we're going to go ahead and fasten off here with a tail long enough to comfortably weave in. And then I'm going to go back to my original sample and show you how to weave in the ends. Here's the end that I fastened off for my hand towel. I've threaded it through a tapestry needle. I'm going to work sort of like an invisible join. I'm going to come around the front here and insert it into the next stitch, picking up both loops. That's from the front side to the back side and pull through. And then I'm going to go to the back of the work of the stitch I just finished and I'm going to insert it through that loop on the top, working on the back side and I'm going to pull it through. My goal is to mimic the look of a stitch here with the V-shape on the top and then I'll pull with my fingers to manipulate the fabric so that it lays the way I want it to look and not bunched up or uneven. And then when I'm happy with that I'll turn it to the back side and I'll start weaving in the end. I'm going to weave it down vertically. I'm just inserting into a stitch nearby and each time I insert my needle I'm not going to pick up the whole entire stitch like this. I'm going to insert it into the center of the stitch breaking it in half. Then I'll work down several stitches and when I exit I'm also going to break the stitch in half. This is going to help catch my yarn so that it stays more secured. And as I tug, I'm going to go back to the front and I'm just going to make sure that it still looks the way I want. This is the time where you can manipulate the fabric if you need to. Then I'll flip my work. I work three passes. So I'm going to insert into a nearby stitch. Then I'll insert 
back up through the stitches I just worked. And then I'll flip it so I can work back in the same direction I just came from. If you feel secure after two passes, you can stop. If you don't feel secure enough after three, work a fourth pass. Whatever you need to do that feels like your end is secured. And I'll tug on it and I'm ready to fasten that off. You're going to work all your ends basically the same. I have a couple of them. I'll actually come to this one in the middle because it's in the stitches. For these that are here, when I weave them in, I'm going to weave them into several of the stitches. I will most likely, this is a an end that needs to be weaved into, that's why it's loose. So I will most likely work up into stitches like this. And then for this other one, work it down into stitches this way. Just work under several stitches. Making sure not to work back and undoing the yarn change. So you can see the direction that the yarn is coming. You just want to make sure you don't work back into that direction. Otherwise it can pull the stitches out. So here I'm just inserting my needle under that stitch to have it so that it's wrapped around something so I can now work in the position that I want to go and you could just go upwards with it this way but since I have that end to weave in right there I'm gonna go the other direction I'm not gonna go horizontally because then it would bunch up my fabric and it's possible you would see it from the other side because you have these chain space holes So I'm going to work upwards under several of these stitches here. And pull through. And you want to make sure when you pull through it also doesn't bunch up your fabric or distort the stitches that you just worked. You don't want to pull too tight. Then I'll work back down in the same direction in a nearby stitch, breaking my stitch in half always, and then back through several of the stitches that I just worked. And then again I'm just manipulating my fabric here so that it doesn't distort my stitches and one more pass and now I feel secure about that I'm gonna go ahead and fasten it off And then I'm just going to go ahead and weave in all the rest of my ends off camera. They're all going to be about the same. The ones I have up here work the same. The one down on the bottom, instead of just working through the moss stitch pattern here, you can just work it up the side or horizontally here into the single crochet round of the border. Just make sure to manipulate your fabric so that it doesn't bunch up. Guys, thanks so much for watching my video. You'll find the free crochet pattern to this at ilovenots.com, which I'll link in the description below. Please smash that like button and hit subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.